This video is all about gain staging. Gain staging comes from all the various stages in the recording and mixing chain and mastering chain that can add or decrease gain. Gain isn't just raising a level, it's also lowering. It can be a positive and negative. So this includes anything from analog to digital converters, if you're recording to tape, your tape machine, equalizer, preamp, and I would even, I know it's technically not correct because it's not a piece of gear, but I would even throw your room into the mix as well. Because if you're not keeping your noise low in your room, you're just contributing to the problem. The typical idea of gain staging is to optimize levels so that you're neither distorting the signal or you're not recording it too low so that a lot of noise is introduced. For example, this is what digital distortion sounds like. I just want to make it obvious on this video what clipping actually sounds like. Digital distortion on a typical interface in a home studio does not overload very well. <laughs> I definitely clipped on that last one. I'm clipping all over the place actually. Um, but yeah. I'm going to turn it up all the way now. It's going to get really nasty. Test one, two, three. How's everybody doing today? If you can even hear me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's why I always bring it down right here. Negative 18. Test one, two. There we go. It's as simple as that. And look at that. I even, I think I even popped right there. Like I said, this is a, this is a very, uh, poppy and I, I just did it again very poppy microphone and I typically do not use it for voiceovers but it is very very sensitive and my air conditioner just turned on so I'm gonna end this recording right now alright this is what it sounds like when you record too quiet and I doubt most of you would record this quiet so I'm gonna show you what happens when you record a little bit louder but with stacked tracks. All right, I'm recording at around negative 36 decibels peaking, and I'll digitally boost this just to show you how loud it sounds, the noise level after you stack tracks. But the important thing to note is that this is about 20 decibels quieter than what I recommend, which will get you out of the noise zone pretty well. Not only can recording too loud distort your signal, if there's no distortion on the signal, your interface may actually have a built-in limiter that clamps down on the signal. And this results in loss of transients, a loss of tonality, which a lot of people attribute to an open sound. You've heard that a lot. You know, make, make your sores sound like it's really nice and open, like a professional mix. Well, that's what that's all about. An open signal, can be totally ruined by recording way too loud. And transients are that punch that you get, uh, especially with drums, but it can be from any instrument really. Loss of transients leads to a dull sound that you know you could probably enhance it later on in the mix, but if you lose that from the beginning, what's the point? So recording quieter, then if you, if you see my video about recording, how to record setting levels, um, proper, proper audio recording levels, that is a type of gain staging, but gain staging goes through everything. Um, a good, good example of this is a guitar player who sets all his pedal boards up and each stage, each pedal has to be optimized to what that guitar player wants. And if you if you leave something a little bit too loud, a little bit too quiet, there's gonna be noise unless you want the noise, that's an issue. So a few rules to remember. Bring up your signal to line level as early as possible in the chain. So typically right after your microphone and cable or whatever you're recording, your, your line level, your, your direct box, right after that is your preamp. Adding EQ prior to that or after that, um, anything before the preamp brings up your source to line level would be a bad idea. 
Also, if you have a line level signal and you're going into your mixer board and lowering that signal, you're, you're not gain staging properly. Something that I used to see a lot of people do when we would record um, videos or films was they would have an external mixer and then they would send a mic level output to the camera, even though the camera was capable of recording a line level signal with just the switch on the side of the camera. Um, you know, people just think, oh, microphone, well, you know, I see mic level, I I'm going to switch that. No, the whole idea of having an external mixer is to, to, use, to utilize that external mixers better preamps most external preamps are better than the ones built into the camera so essentially <laughs> you're you're defeating the purpose of having that piece of gear um so again line level as soon as possible rule number two the more expensive a piece of gear is typically the more headroom and the quieter it is Unfortunately, the reality of the situation is the more money you spend on something, typically it is going to have a higher signal to noise ratio and higher headroom before distorting. That's, that's just, you know, how gear is usually built. Rule number three, every component adds noise. Like I said earlier, preamps, equalizers, the analog to digital converter. Everything in the signal chain adds noise. So if you have the capability of routing right from your mixer board or right from your preamp, do it. Rule number four, keep faders and knobs at unity gain as often as possible. Usually this position is designated as a zero or at the 12 o'clock position or on some mixer boards, it actually has the letter U. And remember, just like I said with my proper audio recording levels video, analog zero is equal to about negative 20 decibels full scale, um, also you know known as digital. Um, anywhere between negative 20 to negative 12 will get to, will get you where you want to be. And actually, I was reading on a message board that a famous engineer or a well-respected engineer, I should say, records with no peaks above negative 10 decibel full scale. So that's, that's what I do nowadays. Rule number four, if you have to boost or attenuate, do it with the earlier component. So for example, if you're, you know, mixing in the box and you have a, um, a plugin that has an output and it's going into another plug-in following that, or if you're mixing out of the box and your piece of hardware has an output or input, or I'm sorry, an output level after it does all its processing, you would want to set that level for the prior piece of gear, not for the one that's it's receiving. So if the next, let's say, you know, piece of gear number three has too hot of a signal. So go back to piece of gear two and lower that output. Or um, if gear piece of three is getting too low of a signal, go back to uh, gear piece, gear number two or plug in number two and set that so that it's, um, it's outputting more of a signal. Rule number six, gain staging is still important in the digital domain of floating point processing. That's because some plugins model analog gear and expect analog level signals to be optimal. Rule number seven, your master fader should be higher than your channel faders. Rule number eight, Noise reduction software should be used as a crutch. It should be used if there's no other way of taking care of that noise problem. If you can avoid noise or reduce it as much as possible, do that. You don't want to wait until 
you know, fix it in the mix or fix it in the master. That's bullshit. Get that out of your vocabulary. Fix it when you're tracking. Don't wait. Rule number 10. Once you start equalizing a signal, you're going to end up adjusting your channel fader or if the plugin has one, it's volume or gain control. If you're boosting, you're better off lowering your gain of that specific track so that it matches the signal volume before you boosted the EQ. This ensures that what you're hearing is just the equalizer and not just the perception of loudness being louder, which of course we hear that as being better. This is something I, I really fought with when I started mixing. And once I started doing that, you know, if I'm boosting a signal, I got to lower that output. Or if I'm lowering a signal, I have to boost that because otherwise you think, oh, I'm lowering the loudness and it, it's not sounding as good. No, you have to compensate. Rule number 11, not all hardware or plugins have meters. You have to use your ears. Even if they do have meters, you should still use your ears. And finally, rule number 12, rules are meant to be broken. Know the rules, but also know when to break them because the basics of gain staging is to optimize the signal to noise ratio but a lot of times you do want that analog saturation. A lot of people talk about that. You know, the analog thickness, it adds that extra something to my signal. And that extra something usually is um, harmonics that make a signal sound better or more musical, give it character. That's typically the, the traits that people, you know, use to describe um, that analog sound and that distortion is usually what you're going for. Unfortunately for us home recordists, you know, our gear that's solid state in nature or even tube gear that's, that's, um, in the, in the budget range is, is typically very noisy or it's analog distortion is nasty sounding. <laughs> Unlike, you know, those $50,000 SSL consoles that, um, you know, audio engineers who are working with major labels can afford to use. You know, we're on the lower end here with the Behringer, the Mackie mixers, um, you know, all that good stuff. All, you know, our mix, if our mixing board costs 800 bucks, that's a lot of money for us, you know, and we get laughed at, but hey, our basement recordings, our attic recordings sound pretty damn good, all, all things considered, right? You know, that's, that's the, the goal with, um, with this YouTube channel. Real Home Recording is all about maximizing the quality of budget gear or, you know, what piece of gear that might break the bank is actually worthwhile to get. You know, how do I make it that my home recordings sound as professional as possible or how I want them to be? Um, cause it's possible in this day and age, it is very possible. And gain staging is something that a home recordist, a home audio engineer, whatever you want to call yourself, project studio, project studio engineer, you can make it happen. You know, if I can do it, you can do it. And I'm giving you that knowledge that I've amassed over these years um, in this one little channel. And I hope it is very valuable to you guys. And, um, you know, again, I'm just one guy. If you don't believe me, go ahead and research all the information I give you on this channel. But, uh, you know, make, you, you only learn by making mistakes or by learning from the mistakes people have already made before you or from reading the fucking manual. <laughs> but anyway, guys, um, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time.